Hey guys, today we're going to talk about electronegativity. This is the last trend on the periodic table. Electronegativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons. Real people words, it is who the electrons are going to stay with once a bond occurs. So electronegativity tells us where the electrons are going to go and where they're going to stay after a bond is created. The Pauling scale is most commonly used to determine the electronegativity difference and what type of bond is being created. Fluorine, he's the big bully of the periodic table. He has the electronegativity value of about 4, and the values range down to cesium and francium, which are the least electronegative at 0.7. The difference in electronegativity tells us the type of bond that is most likely to form. And remember in math class, difference means that we are subtracting. So you take the two numbers from the elements that are being bonded, you subtract the numbers, and those tell you what type of bond is going to be happening. If the difference in electronegativity is 0 to 0.3, it is nonpolar covalent. If it's 0.4 to 1.9, it is considered polar covalent. Polar covalent is a bond that is created that one side has a slight charge that is positive and another side has a slight charge that is negative. And if it's between 2 and 3.3, the bond that is created is ioning. So we have this continuum of bonds. Nonpolar covalent means that it is evenly shared. There is no overall charge. Polar covalent, one side is positive and one side is more negative. So depending upon what time it is and where the electrons are, you may have a more negative side or a more positive side. In ionic, where you have a distinct positive and a distinct negative. We have fluorine up in this right corner and fluorine has 3.98 on the Pauling scale. And 3.98 is the electronegativity. Fran francium has a 0.7 and cesium has a 0.79. So as you go out from fluorine, the farther away from fluorine you get, the smaller the electronegativity is. So electronegativity increases left to right. It gets bigger as you go this way and bottom to top. So it increases, it, the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger the closer you get to fluorine. So nonpolar covalent. This is what happens when the electronegativity is less than 0.3 or 0.4. This means that the electron spends equal amounts of time around each atom. So if we have chlorine as an example, chlorine has one pair of electrons that end up being shared between the two atoms. And this pair of electrons are going to go around chlorine and then around the next one, and then around the first chlorine, and then around the second one. And they keep making this figure eight because they are spending equal time around each element. Now I like to equate this to having divorced parents, but they have joint custody. So you spend one week at your mom's house, one week at your dad's house. One week at your mom's house, one week at your dad's house. Polar covalent is when we have the difference of electronegativity between 0.4 and 2, and we have Electrons that spend unequal amounts of time around each atom. So water is a really good example of this. We have two H's and an O. And this H and O share a pair of electrons. So what ends up happening is the electrons go around oxygen maybe two times, hydrogen once. Oxygen two times, hydrogen once. So I compare this to, to divorced parents, but now you don't have joint custody. Maybe you only have weekend visitations. You spend a full week at your mom's, the following week at your mom's, and then that weekend at your dad's. When I grew up, I spent every other weekend with my dad. So I did spend time at both houses, but I spent more time at my mom's. So that, that side was charged a little bit. Just like here, if you spend more time around oxygen, the oxygen is going to have an overall negative charge because the electrons are there more often. Ionic bonds are when electrons are completely stolen. So the difference of electronegativity is above 2.0, and these are ionic bonds. This means that the electrons only spend one time around one atom. So this would be a single parent household. Maybe 
one parent's not in the picture or they moved away or they're in the military or for whatever reason they're not here and when we have sodium and chlorine sodium's electron leaves sodium's outside shell and joins chlorine's outside shell and when this happens the electron no longer spends any time with sodium it is now with chlorine all the time so this is a single custody household so again you're going to be given the numbers of electronegativity values for individual elements. You're going to take the elements that are bonding, subtract those values, and once you subtract those values, you are going to be able to determine what type of bond is being formed. So again, the overall trend. The most electronegative element is fluorine. Fluorine is the bully. He steals everybody's lunch money. If you remember that, everything becomes easy because electronegativity must increase towards fluorine. As you get closer to fluorine, the electronegativity value goes up. So again, we're going to look one last time at the periodic table. Fluorine is the biggest bully. So if you start down here and go this way, the electronegativity increases. And again, in class, I'm going to give you the values. So if I say lithium and fluorine are making a bond, tell me the type of bond that is being created you will either have the ability to look up the electronegativity values or I will tell them to you. You simply subtract and determine the bond from there. So when we see each other tomorrow in class, we're going to work with electronegativity, seeing what types of bonds are formed and practicing on the periodic table. See you then.